Good evening everyone, I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video. We're looking a step or two back and addressing this topic on hyperbolic graphs, especially with regards to their asymptotes because these type of graphs are frequently not mentioned quite often and therefore they end up being ignored. We've looked at these types of graphs previously but we've never looked at them in terms of asymptotes. You know in terms of asymptotes we have oblique asymptotes, we have vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. Fortunately none of these graphs have any oblique asymptotes. The only things which may come about are either vertical or horizontal asymptotes and we have to see how they come about. We'll start with the two of the easier graphs which are the sine hx and cosine hx. None of these have any asymptotes of any kind simply because in terms of their rational functions they look like this. You know sine hx is equal to e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. That's a hyperbolic sine. And in terms of the hyperbolic cosine, we have e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. In terms of what we've looked about in asymptote videos, n and m, you know we've talked about these. n value, the highest order exponent or degree of exponent in the numerator. m is the highest order degree of exponent in the denominator. In terms of the expressions over here that you see before you, in both of these cases, the exponent is 1. Highest order is 1 in the numerator and it's 0 in the denominator. So you know definitely for sure there is no horizontal asymptote and there really is no vertical asymptote for either of these because there is no zero of the function you can calculate. There is absolutely no way that you can zero out the denominator. So these two functions are easy in that they have no asymptotes to deal with. And what about them in terms of graphing? You know if you were to put zero in place of x, you can zero out the numerator and you can get a origin point. But if you were to zero out the x here in the cosine hyperbolic function, you'd get 2 over 2 and you get 0 comma 1. And that would clue you in as to how these graphs are. The hyperbolic sine graph would look something like this. The hyperbolic cosine would right here have a 0 comma 1 y-intercept and the graph would look something like this. So these two graphs are easy, there are no asymptotes of any kind. Now the hyperbolic secant and the hyperbolic cosecant are a little more interesting because you know this right here is the reciprocal of the hyperbolic cosine 2 and you'd end up getting 2 over e to the x plus e to the minus x and likewise you can do the reciprocal of the hyperbolic sine e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2 see we're doing the reciprocal of it and you get 2 over e to the x minus e to the minus x in these instances now a asymptote does arrive in terms of the highest order degree in the numerator we have a 0 in the denominator we have a 1 same with this whenever n is less than m whenever n is less than m you know you have a standard horizontal asymptote of y equals zero in both of these cases you see that y equals zero so you know here the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero here horizontal asymptote is y equals zero there is no way you can zero out the denominator so there's no vertical asymptote here at all but there is a way you can zero out the denominator here with this if you were to put a value of zero on the x's you what would you get you'd get e to the 0 which is a 1 minus 1 you'd get a 0 in terms of the value over here you'd get 0 minus 0 you get 0 in the denominator and you'd end up getting 2 over 0 which is undefined so you cannot do it so therefore you know very well here in this instance the vertical asymptote here is x equals 0 which is your y-axis and how does this represent here in terms of a graph if you were to put 0 here in the places of x you'd end up getting 2 divided by 2 and you get a 0 comma 1 but you know horizontally there's an asymptote y equals 0 so your graph would look something like this it would traverse along this x-axis and then it would come up to the point 0 comma 1 then it'd go down over here and that would be exactly how your graph would be with the x-axis being a horizontal asymptote and there's no vertical asymptote for this one over here it's not too hard you're not going to have the origin play any role over here. There's no intersection because you cannot have a situation where x is equal to 0 because you end up having a zeroed out denominator which is undefined. You know you have a horizontal asymptote, you have a vertical asymptote, your x and y axis are your asymptotes and your graph would look something like this. And that's exactly how it would be. We don't have to discuss the domains though you know the domain over here is minus infinity to infinity. The range is from 0 up to 1 including 1. Here the domain is minus infinity up to zero and then it jumps across and from zero up to infinity. The range is likewise the same from minus infinity up to zero then it jumps up over the axis and from zero up to infinity it continues. 
Now the hyperbolic tangent graph requires a little bit more work to do the analysis of its asymptotes but you can simplify the procedure by looking at it in terms of this. You're looking at hyperbolic sine divided by hyperbolic cosine. If you bring in their individual definitions you're really looking at e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by e to the x plus e to the minus x the over 2 the over 2 cancel out. Now in this instance when you look over here you can have the ability to generate at least a horizontal asymptote. You cannot generate a vertical asymptote because think about it you cannot zero out the denominator there is no vertical asymptote but you can clearly look for a horizontal asymptote because the highest order degree of exponents in the numerator and the denominator are the same you have to do the specific horizontal asymptote determination. If you were to look at everything in terms of e to the x being the highest order then you would apply that using the way you know how to calculate the specific horizontal asymptote. If you don't know I refer you to my asymptote videos you can see it. If you're looking at everything with regards to e to the x you would divide everything in the numerator and everything in the denominator with this specific factor you have e to the x plus e to the minus x over e to the x. When you do it and you separate everything out in the individual denominators you have e to the x divided by e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by e to the x over see this is the hyperbolic sine this right will be the hyperbolic cosine you have e to the x divided by e to the x plus e to the minus x over e to the x these things cancel out to give you one minus you can carry these down by eliminating the negative exponents e to the minus x is just same thing as one over e to the x you get one over e to the two x here you get one plus one over e to the two x when you're looking at everything over here you're looking at things with regards to limit as x approaches infinity in that case these parts zero out you end up having just one so in this specific instance your one horizontal asymptote is y equals one but there's another horizontal asymptote to be found if you look at everything now with regards to, uh, to the other common exponent that you're seeing and that's e to the minus x now if you divide these two expressions with e to the minus x and look what happens you have e to the x minus e to the minus x this is my numerator part I'm dividing it by now this common factor and now the denominator part I'm dividing by this common factor and let's do it and then you separate everything out into their individual denominators we have e to the x divided by e to the minus x minus e to the minus x divided by e to the minus x all over this separated out among its common denominators e to the minus x e to the minus x and let's see what happens these cancel out to give you ones and here what you end up gaining you can flip everything up getting rid of these negative exponents means it's moving up by means of reciprocal effect you get e to the 2x minus 1 divided by e to the 2x plus 1 now in this instance you're looking at this assumption x is approaching minus infinity when x is approaching minus infinity and you plug it in in terms of these x's these become minus 2x minus 2x so in this instance these zero out and you get a minus 1 over 1 which is minus 1 so you end up seeing the other horizontal asymptote y equals minus 1. But looking here at this equation which lends itself into this equation if you were to put x value of 0 you don't zero out the denominator because you get a 1 plus 1 but you zero out the numerator and you get a value of 0 comma 0 so you know that the hyperbolic tangent curve will go through the origin. So the graph would look something like this knowing that there is no vertical asymptote see no vertical asymptote but having two horizontal asymptotes y equals one y equals minus one and the fact that it goes to the origin your curve would look something like this having a domain minus infinity to positive infinity and a range from minus one up to one but not including either of those values now this last function the hyperbolic cotangent goes through a similar procedure you can break it up into hyperbolic cosine divided by hyperbolic sine and then it results into that expression the over twos of each of the components cancel out you can look at it now in the denominator you can very easily in terms of a vertical asymptote you'd end up having a x equals zero creating a situation of an undefined where you have an expression with a zero in the denominator so we do actually have a vertical asymptote for the hyperbolic cotangent and in terms of the horizontal asymptotes you would have to do the similar procedure as you did for the hyperbolic tangent if you were to put the common factor because here the numerator and the denominator have the same n equals m right n is equal to m so you have to find a specific horizontal asymptote if you were to 
use this as a factor, right? Go through the same procedure as you just did, e to the x over e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by e to the x. This right as a numerator expression, and then the denominator e to the x divided by e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by e to the x. Limit here as x approaches infinity. We're looking at that. You know, this cancels out, this cancels out, meaning it becomes 1. You get 1 plus 1 over e to the 2x, because I'm getting rid of these negative exponents. You get 1 minus 1 over e to the 2x limit as x approaches infinity, these zero out, and you get 1. So you know, you have y equals 1 as being one of the horizontal asymptotes. If you were to look at everything in terms of e to the minus x, which has this limit as x approaches minus infinity, you go through the same similar procedure, we'll just uh, expedite it, e to the x plus e to the minus x, this is a numerator expression being divided by this common factor, and then the denominator expression, e to the x minus e to the minus x divided by e to the minus x, and e to the minus x, here these instances become ones, and you get rid of these negative exponents, you have e to the 2x plus one divided by e to the 2x minus 1. Here now as you do this limit as x approaches minus infinity these two e to the 2x are really viewed as e to the minus 2x plus 1 divided by e to the minus 2x minus 1. Why? Because I'm looking at the negative component. I plug that in and do that. When I put in the infinity component I get e to the minus infinity plus 1 and e to the minus infinity minus 1 which is 0 out because 1 divided by an increasingly large number is 0 you end up getting 1 divided by minus 1, you have a minus 1. So the other horizontal asymptote is y equals minus 1. Graphically, we know we can't put a 0 in terms of x because we zero out the entire denominator and you have an undefined. So we know by no means is the origin involved as an intersection point or an intercept. But we do know that y equals 1, y equals minus 1 are horizontal asymptotes and we also know this vertical asymptote is your y-axis, x equals 0. So that leads us to conclude that our hyperbolic cotangent curve looks something like that. In terms of domain, it's from minus infinity up to zero. Then it jumps across it from zero up to infinity. In terms of range, it comes from minus infinity up to this minus one. Then it jumps across and from one, it goes up to positive infinity. And that gives you the curves. So in this video, we've analyzed the hyperbolic function curves. And we've done that in the past by showing you the curves. But here we've analyzed how the curves can be drawn by means of the asymptote analysis. And you know how we do that using the n and the m, looking for horizontal, vertical, or oblique asymptotes. None of these expressions over here generate any oblique asymptotes. You're only looking for either vertical or horizontal. The hyperbolic sine, the hyperbolic cosine have no asymptotes at all. So they're the easiest to remember. The other four have some combination of the two. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.